movie I'm talking about today is Batman Gotham Knight. Gotham Knights is a series of six short animated films that take place between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. So it's kind of meant to bridge uh, the gap between the two, despite not really being about either. Does that hurt, Cassandra? It feels like being caught in the rain. An annoyance. Something to point out is that the voice of Batman in all six short films is Kevin Conroy, who famously did the voice of Batman throughout the entire run of the animated series from the 90s. And he also does the voice of Batman in the Arkham Asylum games. Now why would someone want to shoot me, Mr. Fox? Let's just say your boyish charm might not work with everybody, Mr. Wayne. Something else is that they were all done by different anime production companies, and so therefore they were all done in a different style, but they all followed each other story-wise, which I thought was kind of neat. Put down the guns. Bite me! Very different from the Animatrix, which has a lot of similarities to this movie, being that they're both in betweequels with six shorts done by anime directors. But unlike that one, this one, each short followed the last one, which I thought was kind of neat. For example, the first one has Batman fighting a supervillain who has a lot of tech. And at the beginning of the second short film, they say this. Jacob Feely, our man in black. The high-tech psycho? Just dropped in, did he, Lou? Even though they all followed each other, every short was very different from one another. And I'll just go through them in order. The first one was called, Have I Got a Story for You. Wait a minute! Batman never cut nobody's head off! Everybody knows he don't ever kill nobody! I'm making it more colorful, yo! And it was about a group of kids all sitting around a skate park. It had a really cool art style to it, kind of cartoony, but also had very interesting and unique settings that they drew. Like, it starts in a dilapidated skate park where everything is just completely covered in graffiti. But that's where they all meet, and they all start telling stories about how they just recently saw Batman. Hell with that! You won't believe where I've been! (laughs) <laughs> nah, mom beats all y'all. Yeah, so? In each story, he's fighting the same villain, which I thought was kind of cool, but even though the villain is exactly the same, Batman's different in each one. And both of you are floating if you think you know what Batman really is. He ain't no bat, and he ain't no spooky living shadow. How would you know? Because I saw him first. With the difference being, like, what Batman looks like and what his powers are, pretty much. That one I liked. It kind of sets the tone for the rest of them as showing, like, life in Gotham City from the point of someone who's not a superhero or a villain for a change. And that actually saying the story in this time period, kind of a year two Batman, sort of. But that one I really liked for those reasons. And also, the animation style really, like, stood out in that one, I thought. And I liked the action in that one. The next one is Crossfire, which was mostly from the perspective of Rene Montoya, who's one of the police on the GCPD, specifically in the MCU. Not to confuse anyone, but that that stands for Major Crime Unit, and it's Commissioner Gordon's personal unit. I'm thinking of transferring out of the MCU. What? You can't. It's the Major Crimes Unit, Chris. Gordon picked you the same as he picked me. He picked all the detectives in the squad. You can't turn your back on that. Her and her partner are investigating the mafia. They just happen to get caught in the crossfire as their car is parked right in the middle of a full-on shootout between two rival gangs. I told you and your Ivans to stay the hell off my turf, Russian. But then Batman saves them. And that's it. That's the whole thing. But I really like that one because it felt like a 70s cop movie. Because it has like a really slow pace, but once it gets going, it's like really exciting. The next one is Field Test, which might have the best animation out of all of them, but it's also the most boring. Teresa Williams was a thorn in my side, no doubt. But she was an admirable person. The irony is that she died from gang fire by the punks she defended. Essentially, the prettiest version of Bruce Wayne talks to Lucius Fox for most of the movie. Two boats, each approximately 40 feet in length, anchored in Gotham Harbor. I'm assuming both are up for sale and you're just trying to see which one looks better from space. What else would you use a satellite for? But then for the second third of the movie, he's like playing golf for almost no reason. One thing I've learned in life, Bruce, you're only as good as your drive. 
I don't know. It was it was a weird that was a weird scene. And then Batman has to fight the gang members that were involved in that shootout in the last one on these two boats. And that part was really good, but everything else was kind of boring and it just felt like come on get to the point for like most of it. The next one was in Darkness Dwells. That one I'm actually not going to talk about too much cuz it has a pretty good mystery in it. It was a story told entirely in the Gotham City sewers with Batman hunting Killer Croc who's been rampaging and eat, eating people. You know, normal Killer Croc stuff. Batman, what's going on? I found Croc. Something's wrong. Vision's all twisted inside out. Which I thought was kind of neat too because Killer Croc's not in the Nolan movies. But that one was really good and had like a really good mystery and a good animation style. And I liked the action, though there was very little action in that one. But yeah, that one was really good. And so short, I can't really talk about anything else without spoiling it, so. what the city look like from up on high? It looks dirty. Working Through Pain. That one was actually my favorite of all six of them, but I could see why it's probably most people's least favorite. Honesty, Mr. Rain. The fakirs said you were not honest with them. You are not looking for enlightenment or truth. Because what it is is that Batman gets shot, then it's like interspersed between him working through his pain, like the title implies, as he like thinks about his past, kind of, and like seeing like how his pain has pretty much brought him to become the person he is. And I really like that one because it's kind of delving into the personal philosophy of Batman. You came asking for help in dealing with your pain, but your pain is beyond my abilities, for your pain is leading you down a path you desire. And the last one was Deadshot, where Batman Batman fights Deadshot. Pretty straightforward. Another character who's not in the Nolan movies. I don't think he's actually been in a Batman movie, though he was in the Suicide Squad movie played by Will Smith. That one's kind of cool, and I actually thought that one was the only one of the shorts that actually felt like one any of the Batman movies, and especially the Christopher Nolan movies. All right. It's showtime. Story isn't that strong, but it doesn't need to be just because the action's so cool. And all of these are so short, you don't really expect much story from any of them. But that one was really cool. I think that one definitely had the best action. Though probably the weakest story except for Field Test, which was just really boring. I'd say overall I like these. I also really like uh, all the different animation styles and how it kind of playfully brushes up against different genres, I think. And I really liked how they all followed each other. But I was wondering what you wanted to do with your gun collection. You keep moving it, and I keep tripping over it. Sorry, Alfred. I suppose I should take it to the police. But this is a pretty enjoyable 75 minutes. I would recommend it, especially if you're watching through the Christopher Nolan trilogy. I mean, you don't need it. It doesn't really tie into anything. It hints to the Nolan movies, but it's not a necessary watch or anything. You worry me sometimes. You worry too much. Anyway, like and subscribe if you like that, and uh, I'll see you next time. I was just doing my job. <laughs>